Welcome to Kung Fu Happy Number 2. I misspoke. This is my final video for tonight. This is not a martial art video. So, sadly, you're going to have to hear me talk for about 5 to 10 minutes as I take these headbands out of my head and comb my hair out. I want to talk to you all about truth reactions and fear of reactions okay so here's the thing you know I like to think that I'm very approachable and I damn sure try to be that's shit most people I know that I'm honest I'm honest to a fault you know which has sometimes come back to bite me in the ass no because I think that even a white lie is just a badass thing to do. So, I think that a lot of us fear the judgment or the reactions of others. And a lot of us tell people what we think they want to hear. Alright? I don't do that. If I don't have anything nice to say, I will probably take the better side of valor and just keep my damn mouth shut. Unless it's something that's going to help you. Like especially if you're like a conceited so-and-so. And you need to be taken down a notch. You know. Then I may say something to you. And I will do my damn just to think before I speak. And try my best to word it right. Because 9 times out of 10. Once it comes out your mouth. You can't put it back in. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. If you said it, you meant it on some level or another. You might not admit it the way it came out, but you meant it. So you need to um, own it and you need to think before you speak, which a lot of us fail to do. But a lot of us also, we fail to understand that there are good and bad ways to react to shit. Nobody likes a truth teller, which is why I don't have a lot of friends. And... I don't like a truth teller, but I like the truth. I'd rather have it and be hurt by it than to have to discover it down the road. You know, I'd rather you just give it to me straight because giving it to me straight, it may not soften the blow, but at least it gets it out the way. All right. Like in my last relationship, for instance, you know, I put two years of my life into her, and all she had to do was tell me the truth from the jump. That we were just either going to be friends with benefits, and don't fall in love with me, because you're going to get hurt really bad. I hurt people. That's what I do. That would have been great, because then I would have just been friends with benefits, and I would have been alright. But I was dumb, and I was in a bad spot in life. But, you know, like I said... I like to think I'm a very approachable person. And I think that if you met me on the street, you might like me until you really get to know me. Then you'll either like me for who I am because I'm honest, or you'll hate me for who I am because I'm honest. A lot of us are afraid to tell people how we feel because of the reaction. And that's what this video boils down to. It boils down to people's reactions. I think most of us fear telling people how we feel about them because we're scared that we're probably going to get punched in the face. Well, getting punched in the face only hurts for a few seconds unless someone puts you to sleep. Then it really only hurts when you wake up. <laughs> so, that is not from experience. That is from experience from um, kissing glass bottles with my face, from trying to fly, smacking foreheads with Mish Early in the fifth grade, smacking foreheads with my cousin Brian, God rest his soul. You know, I've, I've had some damage done, but when the lights go out, you really don't feel anything until you wake up. Trust me. When I hit the glass bottle with my forehead when I tried to fly, the only reason I felt it was because my mom threw me in the car when she seen the blood trickling down my face. It was the first time I've ever been hurt, like really seriously hurt. When I got hit in the chest with the football and it bounced off my chest, and they told me to die for it because I'm not a football player. So I dove for it. And Mitch Early, cool-ass guy, 
He dove for it. Irresistible force. Immovable object. Immovable object one. I woke up in the infirmary with a goose egg and a concussion. And I thought that I was Christopher Columbus. You should have heard the things that I told my mom. And I still remember that. I remember going to Martha Jefferson. And I remember the doctor telling me that I was not Christopher Columbus. And I remember telling him that he needs to um, batten down the hatches and hoist the anchors. We're going to America or some shit I said to him. But it was kind of funny. And to say that when you're in the fifth grade, you know, I don't even remember what, how the hell I even remember Christopher Columbus. But I was Christopher Columbus. Now, when my cousin Brian and I did it, we were jumping across the picnic table in my aunt's yard. Irresistible force, immovable object. Brian being the immovable object, our forehead smacked. I went this way. Brian went this way. Brian had to straddle me when I hit the goddamn ground. I was completely unconscious. I have no idea how I got on the porch. But somebody got me on the porch, and then... When I woke up, they had a big ice rag on my head. And that forth began my journey of brain damage. So, when we talk to people, we fear their reactions to what we are going to say. Let's say, alright, I'm wearing two of my favorite colors right now. Yellow and gray. And you'll probably all look at me like, ah, yellow is such a girly color, James. Why do you like yellow? I've always liked yellow. I was always scared to tell people that I like yellow. So when they asked me what my favorite color was, I'd go, well, my favorite, favorite color is yellow. But I like red and green and gray because those are the typical colors that black people wanted you to hear when you tell them your favorite color. I don't think that I was honest with myself about um, liking yellow until I got into like high school. Now, I never wore anything yellow because I just didn't have anything yellow. And nothing really went with yellow. And so I didn't just go out and go buy yellow shit. Now, I can't find anything yellow. This shirt was a good deal from A&W or W&N or something down in Richmond. So, you know, I got like three or four of these damn shirts because I got two of them from my dad. We wear, we weighed a... He could fit into my shit now because I had lost so much weight. And he only has weight in his gut. He didn't have weight. Like, solidly. And he was in fairly decent shape for his size. He was bigger than me, height-wise. But our body size was pretty much similar. He had a little bit more muscle mass and more gut. But, you know, I like the shirt, so I bought him one. They only had one size. So it stretched a little bit, but, you know, see my shirt? This is probably the one that he wore, and I wore mine to work today. Like I said, no lies here. Now, see, same shirt. Anyway, when we talk to people, I think if you're afraid of how they're going to react, then you should probably change your approach. And I say this because being mixed is about to come into factor here. All right? As a person who is mixed, I have had lots of people come to me and say, I don't want to offend you, but can I ask you a question? And I would say in return, why not? Now, the reason that it was never really offensive to begin with was because I was so used to being called half-breed and other androgynous names for mixed people. So, you get used to it. And then it's really not offensive because when you think about it, sometimes people just want to know. I mean, it's, it's a little bit different when you're actually Asian, though. Okay? So I'm about to piss all you Asians off right now, but I know that you've been through this because I've asked a few of my Asian friends, and they have confirmed that this shit does kind of piss them off. Now, in a nutshell, also, Margaret Cho has confirmed this, and there was an a Asian lady who made a movie. I wish I could remember the name of it. I think it's, it's like, Am I a Racist or something, too, but I'm not really sure. I'm not going to swear that that's the name of it, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So a lot of my Asian friends are either Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, or every now and again I met someone who's like Chinese, Hawaiian, or from Laos. And me being the dumbass that I am, I would ask them, can I get your last name? And they'd be like, why do you want my last name? I said, because to be honest, 
it's the only way I can tell most of you apart. And they're like, oh, how's that work? I said, well, let's see. Um, outside of Chang, Cal, Kim, and Park, Chans, Lees, and Cho's, and Chow's are Chinese and Korean, but like Kim's, Park's, and some other stuff are mostly Korean. Alright? Now, names like Ito, Takahashi, Hoshi, um, Yoshimama, uh, Shibuya, stuff like that are like Japanese. Now, when you get into like Malaysian last names, Filipino last names, and Indonesian last names, I'm totally screwed. Same thing with Hawaiian last names. I'm totally screwed. You get into uh, Samoan last names, I'm totally screwed. Because the only Asian representatives that the world has known has been Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. They haven't met a lot of big-time important people in Laos that wasn't in government. Or they haven't met a lot of them in Malaysia or Indonesia. Unless it had something to do with like Michelle Yeoh or somebody or Taiwan or places like that because a lot of those guys were founded by China. So they have interchangeable names. You understand? Good. I'm sorry for everyone Asian that I just pissed off. But there has been times where I had um, mistaken someone from Vietnam for Chinese. It happened when I was a child because I didn't know... Did Zhang was a Vietnam last name? I thought Zhang was a Chinese last name. Because most of the people I ever met with the last name Zhang, Z-H-A-N-G, were Chinese. So me and this kid got to arguing and I told him that he should go eat his rice cakes. And he said, fuck you, I'm not Chinese, I'm from Vietnam. I didn't know nothing about Vietnam. I found out later that there was a Vietnam War and I wound up apologizing. No, because I just didn't know. And that's the thing about being Asian, is that a lot of Asians don't know that dumb Americans can't tell you apart. And that's a fact. You know, we can't tell you apart. Which is why I learned certain last names, so that I would not offend Japanese, Chinese, Koreans. Because I want to make sure that I'm on an equal friendship level versus me just being a fucking idiot. You know? And it's the same thing with um, Native American tribal names, because a lot of Native American tribal names are just fucking out there, you know? And it's kind of hard for you to, like, find out if this person is a Lakota or Cherokee. And I'm like, my ancestor who was Cherokee had an American last name. So it was either due to um, indoctrination or due to the fact that um, once America fell to the Westerners, Europeans, or whatever, just like slaves, Native Americans were given or had forced to have last names that people could pronounce. So it's really difficult to go into stuff like that without pissing people off, but that's just the way it is. And this video will probably be the thing that comes back to get me fired from a show. But it's the truth, you know. You can't walk up to every Asian and say, what's up, Chan? Guy might not be Chinese, and you might piss him off by calling him Chan. But, you know, more famous Chinese last name is Chan. Chan's, Chin's, Chow's. Chang's, Ching's, Chong's. You get the point. I'm trying to say that as politely as possible without being offensive. Okay? You have a shit ton of Chinese last names. Some are interchangeable with Korean last names. You have to know this just in case of an emergency. Alright? And the thing with that is, you know, I once watched the movie and I don't think it was Lethal Weapon but it was something in the principle of some guy was fighting this Korean dude and um, the guy said I got you now he called them a bad word and then he called them another bad word that was short for Japanese people and the guy said oh, fuck you I'm from Korea so y y you see reaction is everything and a lot of people are afraid that the reaction of whoever they are speaking to will be a fist in the mouth. That's not always the case. All right, because sometimes people just might react normally. They might not be offended. They might not get mad at what you point out because it might be slightly the truth. And they might be like, oh, you know what? You're basically right. Um, I'm not offended at all. 
but it's so easy to offend people now that we have to be careful. I want you guys to think about how to approach someone and think about reaction. So I'm going to tell you the best way to have a good conversation with someone if you're afraid of reacting is stay in arm's distance. Because if you're in arm's distance, you're in just out of striking range. And watch their body language, you know. If you're saying something that's racially offensive, their bodies are going to shift. If you say something that's personally offensive, their bodies are going to shift. If you say something that they just don't give a damn about, they're probably going to be fine. But reactions are everything. And we humans are afraid of how people are going to react when we talk to them. Which is how we get into these clusterfucks in the first place. I'm James Williams Jr. Mind your reaction time. BCM.